بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله tonight we discuss the challenges for family in our modern time and in Islamic terminology in Akhir zaman which seems not to be far from our time. In the series about globe before and after the advent of Imam Mahdi Sharif, I have mentioned two ways of understanding Akhir zaman One is the last part of history of mankind when Allah sends his last message and final prophet so in this sense our prophet is prophet of Akhir zaman because there would be no other message no other prophet after him and he would be the one that is helping us in providing guidance for what we need to do till end of this world. Another way of understanding Akhir zaman is to go further and mention the very last part of history of mankind which is close to the time of Zuhur and after Zuhur. I explained over there that when you have, for example, suppose a line of 1000 kilometer, the last 10 kilometer is end of this line. The last one kilometer is also end of it. And the last one meter is also end of this line. So Zaman is a continuous line. And depending on your point of reference, any part which ends with end of this line can be considered as Akhir Zaman if it falls in the second half and it's close to the end. So if it is, for example, 1000 kilometer, we cannot say the last 900 kilometer is Akhir Zaman. Or if it is, for example, last 800 or last 500, even half of it, it should be less than half. Maybe something like, you know, one third, one quarter. Therefore, in my humble understanding, Allah, of course, knows. And we don't know. We, to say Allah knows the best is not enough. We say Allah knows. Uh, in our my humble understanding, the period after Islam, end of this world would not become longer than the period before otherwise it would not make sense to say this is Akhir Zaman this is my humble understanding in any way we leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one should fix any time I also don't fix any time I just say it seems that it should not be longer than the before or equal to the before it should be a smaller portion of the whole history 
So, in Akhir al-Zaman, it is narrower sense, means before and after Zuhur, family life has challenges. And it seems our modern time, although still there are things that have not happened, but we see already that it's leading to that point. It seems it's the same direction, unfortunately, unless we do something to either save whole humanity or at least save ourselves and those who are interested. So what we find today is very much in resonance with what we find about problems in Akhir al-Salam. I mentioned first some of the challenges that we see today and then inshallah discuss it in the light of our hadith about Akhir al-Zaman, in particular those things that relate to family life and you would see how much they resonate and then you would see that why it's very important for us to discuss this topic of family life and how to have a kind of preparation and tarbiyah that would be particularly suitable for the time of ghaibah and how Imam Mahdi Sharif should be a very important point of reference for us in our tarbiyah. I just listed here for myself so that I can share with you some of the problems that we see today. For example, one big problem that we see today, and I think for me this is a very big problem, is that in modern societies, unfortunately, governments and institutional governments may try to marginalize the role of family and in particular parents. I'm not saying this is happening in every country, but this is the trend. We see it already in some countries. I hope uh, modern states which have lots of also, you know, good voices and good people and family and family oriented people would avoid that and prevent that. And if they have gone to the wrong direction to correct that. But what we see already is that in some systems, they look at family and parents in particular as people who just bring children to this world. And when they are very vulnerable and somehow, you know, troublesome for system to take care of, you know, every newborn baby, they say, okay, family can, you know, do its part. But when they start going to school, then they may think, okay, as long as parents do what we want, that's fine. Otherwise, we replace them. We have, you know, social systems, social security. We have, I don't know, some care providers. And if we see that families are not uh, taking, you know, their responsibility well, we take the child and leave it to someone either to give it to another family that meet our expectations or we put them in some you know, places for training and often boarding places, etc. It is true that there might be exceptional cases when, for example, parents are mentally ill or I don't know, are abusive, the child is in real danger, parents fail to provide, you know, enough care 
there can be exceptional cases that then we cannot leave everything to parents. But what's the solution? Even here, I think the best solution is the extended family to take care of these cases and government supports them. Or the community takes care of these children and government supports them. Maybe in some exceptional cases, government needs to temporarily take care of these children. And as soon as the problem is solved, bring them back. But for just some differences of opinions, for different ways of, you know, prioritizing values, governments, for example, feel that these parents are, you know, too religious, these parents are too traditional, these parents are too concerned about their children. They should let their children, even when they are not in the age of, you know, legal responsibility, they should be free to meet, to interact, to spend night, you know, wherever they want. And then, because the parents are not happy, then they say, okay, we take the child from you. Alhamdulillah, this is not very common still, but we don't need to wait for the problem to become common. We are already seeing this happening in some societies. And we need to work together with other communities, with Christians, with Jews, with Hindus, with Buddhists, and there are many also even maybe secular people who have interest in family life. We need to work together. So one problem which is very important is marginalizing parents and looking as fam at family just in an instrumentalist way. Not that the people who are really responsible for tarbiyah and upbringing the children, no. They are doing some services for the society and we as government decide, you know, how much we need them and how they should work. It's like, you know, as if they are employed. This is a very important problem. Another problem is that even definition of family is being distorted. What is family? Just two people living together is not family. Family has a very clear definition. For thousands of years, family was always understood as a man, as a woman, as a mother, as a father. And perhaps they have children. Sometimes they may not have children, still they have a family. We cannot think that just two people living together, it's making it a family. Then, formation of family. This is also an issue. People delay or never you know, come into family life. Breaking down of families easily. It is also another problem. And also, Individualism is a big threat because family means to prioritize the other parties, your spouse, your children. And if you don't prioritize, at least think about common good, you are part of it. Either you find your happiness in happiness of your spouse and children first and you really see this brings joy to you or at least say okay we think together like a group who travel for example they should think about the common good not they should think about their own you know selfish interest only but this culture of individualism sometimes even doesn't let people to reach this level of discerning what is common good you know etc or you know to prioritize others you know people think about themselves 
you see this problem mostly when it comes to their spouse and in-laws but even sometimes with respect to their parents they try to plan everything for themselves independent from parents sometimes even they don't feel connected to parents although this is less than feeling not connected with the spouse but this is also happening because individual individualism has no limits it can lead even to the separation from parents from children even from their nation from their country they just think about themselves whatever suits them they may do no matter what's going to happen to the rest so this is another challenge that we have and also Another big challenge that we have today is undermining the work which is done at home. Especially if women spend time at home to make a family a kind of warm, safe, comfortable, enjoyable environment, it is sometimes underestimated. And imagine if this continues for generations, then we would have women who would not want to do anything at home. They don't want to spend any time on their children, on their family, children. I should study, I should work, I should make money. Yes, we can you know, order food from outside or you know, hire a cook or a you know, servant at home. Why I should I spend my time on upbringing children? When they see people look down on those people that their achievement has been upbringing children and you know looking after family you say you know what are your qualifications what are your achievements how much you get people look sometimes down this is very destructive this is very bad women can work can study and if that is something that gives them uh, some progress, some you know, development in their personality, makes them better people, makes them better uh, members of the society, makes them better servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, they should study. Of course, if needed, they should work, but not by undermining family life and family responsibilities. For us, Mothers should remain heroes or heroines. They are really heroines. What they do in addition to this is secondary. If a mother does her role as a mother well, and in addition to that can contribute community, society, humanity, that's great. And we need the women contribution to society. We feel a society in which women are present in public space can be safer and be more spiritual if the way Islam looks at things, our divine religions look at things, it's, that is followed we want presence of women, not only because we need their talents, not because we only need their skills, but the presence of women in every public place. If it is done with dignity and haya, make that place more spiritual, safer, better, more organized. But not by sacrifice 
So these are some of the challenges that we see today. Let us now refer to what we find in our hadith about challenges in Akhir zaman life. Husband, wife, and women, mothers, children, etc. And then it will put us in a good, inshallah, framework to enter into our, enter, enter our main discussion, which is about what should we do now. One of the problems that we find in our hadith is that in Akhir zaman we will witness, inshallah this is not going to happen to our families or our communities, but it's very likely that this will be happening in general and in very large scale, and if you are not careful, it can happen to us as well. And maybe I have already affected us. One of the things we find is that in Akhir zaman there would be not adequate love, respect, compassion in families. For example, Imam Sadiq salam says, رَأَيْتَ الْعُقُوْقَ قَدْ ظَحَرَ in Akhir zaman you will find that Uquq is more dominant. You know the concept of Uquq al and then the person is Aqul al When children are displeasing parents and parents are very upset about them and basically they want to, you know, disassociate themselves from the children. They don't want to see them anymore because they just bring pain to them. This is going to increase. This is an alarm. Or in another hadith, Imam Sadiq says, Vas bil Parents will be undermined, underestimated. Respect and honor for parents will go to decline. This is very dangerous. This will, you know, discourage people even from having children. If people see that, you know, others, you know, are mistreated by their children despite everything they did for their children. Then they say, you know, why we should have children? Or we should have less children. Little by little, people are stop having children. They say, okay, it's better to have a pet. At least this pet is not going to make me suffer. It's not going to fight me. So Estekhfaf is to consider as a light as you know not significant of parents by children is one of the things that happens in Akhir Islam. In another hadith, Imam Sadr Islam said, Ra'ayta ibn al-Rajul Yaftari ala abi wa yadu ala walidai. وَيَفْرَحُ بِمَوْتِهِمَا نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ May Allah save us. You see, son of someone fabricate lies against his father. He attributes lies about his father. Either to gain something financially or you know because he is not happy with his father he tries to ruin his father 
على والدي على دعاء على in Arabic means to pray against دعاء ل means for praying for someone but على means praying against like cursing you see a child prays against his or her parents if parents die the child becomes happy says now I am free now I can have all the inheritance my parents you know were just causing me you know limitation restrictions you know I had to you know do something for them now I'm happy that I don't have any burden now the law they consider having parents as burden etc Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا كَثُرَتْ تَلَاقَ That time is the, uh, one of the things that happened is that divorce increases. It's amazing how these things were foretold. In another hadith which is from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says تُذِلُّكُمْ فِتْنَةِ Fitna is a very important term, inshallah, sometime we should discuss. It's a condition when truth is not very clear. Everything is clouded. And only people who have insight can see through. Otherwise, they will be deceived. They will make mistaken decisions. They will not even sometimes understand who is friend, who is enemy, what's the right, the right direction. So there would be such calamities in understanding, in taking a stance, like muslim, like parts of very dark night. In a very dark night, if there is no light, even light of the stars, you cannot understand the direction. لا يبقى بيت من بيوت المسلمين بين المشرق والمغرب إذا إلا إذا دخلته لا يبقى بيت من بيوت المسلمين بين المشرق والمغرب إلا دخلته No house of houses of Muslims no home will be there from east to the west unless this fitna enters no one is going to be safe you cannot say okay i go to this part of the world and no problem is going to happen maybe it takes time to reach there but sooner or later all are going to be affected Every bait, every house, this fitna enters. Now we already see that how through some, you know, social media, in every house, even without parents knowing, fitna is entering. But this might not be just this, it might be also a common culture you know, some paradigms which are not Islamic, which are not human even, can spread and no household will be safe. I repeat it again. لا يبقى بيت من بيوت المسلمين بين المشرق والمغرب إلا دخلته. No house of Muslim houses between east and west would remain unless this fitna enters that house. So, this is one problem. Another problem is that we find that pleasure, and normally when we say pleasure, we don't mean long term, you know, a spiritual, intellectual pleasure. It's more instant, physical, pleasure, satisfaction, 
a kind of hedonistic culture will become dominant in Akhir Zaman. Imam Sadiq salam said, Yakunu hammun nas butunahum wa furujahum. فَلَا يُبَالُونَ بِمَا أَكَلُوا وَلَا بِمَا نَكَحُوا People's concern become their stomach and sexual desire. It doesn't mean everyone, but it becomes something which is not uncommon, something which will be common, which will be, the, you know, kind of, you know, a spreading uh, problem, a kind of epidemic problem, unless you protect yourself. But they eat, which is, of course, not just food, not just drink. Basically, these are physical pleasures. Part of it comes through. Eating and drinking, part of it is, you know, sort of sexual uh, you know, satisfaction. Basically, a kind of pleasure that even animals get. If a human being operates at the level of animals, it's a problem. If a human being, you know, works hard just to gain animal pleasures, it's a problem. Yes, if you eat, drink, have, you know, uh, moral, religious ways of meeting your sexual, you know, needs, etc. But for greater cause, that's okay, that's good. But if everything is just for sex or for food or drinking, for physical comfort, that's the problem. You are not created for this. We have discussed this, you know, about you know, what makes something human in Hosea Akhlaq lectures in self-knowledge and others. So they don't care about what they eat. What gives them pleasure? That's enough. How this food is prepared? How is it cooked? No, it's just delicious. And also they don't care about where they get sexual pleasure. I'm, again, I repeat, this is not going to happen to 100% of people. But these are the things which are going to be very, you know, common practices. And already we see signs of that in some places. Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam said, Niswatun kashifatun ariyatun mutabarrajat. There would be women who are not properly dressed. They are like naked. They expose themselves. When this becomes the culture, then you can imagine what's going to happen to dignity of women, how women are going to be misused, are going to be mistreated, how they are, uh, some bad men are going to take advantage of this, and how family life is going to be damaged when there are women who are, you know, available outside family without any commitment, people can enjoy having relation with them, then what's going to happen? In another hadith, Amir al Mumini said there would be people, women, dakhilatun fil fitan, ma'ilatun ila shahawat, musra'atun ila labbat. Because this culture very much is culture of, you know, hedonism, modern hedonism, very much needs to misuse women for their plan. Although, Allah has created women very strong and very dignified and very much resistant, but they little by little, you know, confuse some women. And they think in this way they are free. They think they are dignified. If 
you know, they act according to the norms of this culture and then make themselves available. So they become part of the system of corruption. And the first losers and the first victims are women and then men and then children and then families and the whole society. So there would be women who are dakhilatun fil fitan. They will enter into this fitan. They don't keep themselves separate. They will be inclined towards shahabat, lower desires. Musra'atun ila al They will quickly go to what gives them pleasure. Imam Sadiq also said, you find ra'ayta al-nisa yatazawajna al-nisa. You find some women marry women. Not maybe in the course of history, this was not very common. Maybe very rarely sometimes this had happened. I don't have you know any kind of survey in front of me or available to see, but I don't think this was common even. Uh, man having a relation with man it was not common, but it existed maybe in some cases, like people love a lot. But women having a relation, I don't think that was even to that extent. But it happens in after Zaman, and we already see signs of that. Another problem is that Imam Sadiq says, وَمَعِيشَةُ الْمَرْأَةِ مِنْ فَرْجِهَا Or Imam Ali السلام, says, مُسْتَحِلَّاتُ لِلْفُرْ مُحَرَّمَاتُ فِي جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدَ Unfortunately, some women, they would make their living from haram. by giving away their effort and making themselves available for some men, they get money. In some places they call them sex workers. This is not work. This is not a dignified way of living. Why society puts or some system, the government put women in this condition that they have to satisfy people and get money. So these are the problems that are foretold in our hadith. So this was the second issue. So the first issue was decline in love and compassion. In fact. The second was going after instant satisfaction and pleasure in a hedonistic way. The third is ira, which is a kind of protective feeling towards your family, your mother, your sister, your wife, your daughter, goes into decline. People see their daughters, their sisters, even their wives have relations with non mahram Either they don't bother, or even if they bother, they don't say anything. It is true that in the end of the day, everyone is responsible for his or her action. But we also have mutual responsibility, especially inside family. And it is also true that Islam doesn't allow anyone to use illegitimate ways. Like, for example, you know, in some cultures which is not Islamic, for example, they find that the daughter has a relation with someone, they kill the daughter. It's not Islamic, you know, killing for honor or whatever. It's not Islamic. But also to feel indifferent or to do nothing and to say nothing, this is also not acceptable. 
You have to find what is moral, what is spiritual, what is religious, what is wise, which summarizes everything. What is wise? If for some reason a girl is in relation with a Namaha, okay, this is not right. Should not be in relation with Namaha. But to kill this daughter is much worse. It's a much greater crime. So no one should, you know, allow themselves to do something like this. And this is not common in Muslim world. Well, the very rare cases happen, and some people, you know, exaggerate about it. Very rare. And as I said, it's more some cultures that they have this. But this doesn't mean that we should be in silent or even, you know, clap for them that Okay, you, you decided, you know, to have a relation with this boy today, maybe next week with another one, next month with another person. Um, that's, you know, your decision. I am happy. I support you. No. That girl doesn't have experience. That girl hasn't seen ups and downs of life. Can get emotional. You as father, as mother, as brother, as sister, you have responsibility. But wisdom is important. Islamic boundaries have to be observed. You cannot fix a problem with a bigger problem. In any case, one of the problems in Akhir zaman is this. Amir al-Mu'min says, وَيَرَ الرَّجُلُ مِنْ زَوْجَتِهِ الْقَبِيحِ a man finds his wife is doing something ugly, which means as you know, haram relation and you know gets money for that. Doesn't stop. And even this money which comes from haram. This man uses, this woman buys something, brings home, he also eats. Maybe this has not happened that much, although I have heard, you know, things like this. But in future, if you are not careful, this may become more common. Imam Sadiq also said, إِذَا رَأَيْتَ الرَّجُلْ يَأْكُلُ مِنْ كَسْبِ مْرَأَتِهِ مِنَ الْفُجُورِ You see that a man is happy that his wife has relation and when this man uses the money which comes from this. And uh, even sometimes they themselves make the deal. Another problem that happens is that because the culture is not based on values, on dignity, then certain things become like their idols, like their gods. For example, money becomes very important. And instead of having love, respect, friendship with their wives, they become obedient to their wives. It's not a service to a wife if you become a worshiper for your wife. Whatever she says, even if it is wrong, you do it. Actually, it's not worship for anyone, you know, a service to anyone if you obey them, even if they are wrong. For example, if the wife tells them, don't visit your parents. Or, 
you know, do something wrong to take away the money of your parents. Maybe your father has given some of you at Amana, you are his son, he trusted you. Then your wife said, no, don't give her back. What can he do? And you listen to your wife. This is a sign of Akhir Zama. No one should obey parents by annoying or hurting his wife or her husband. That is also wrong. Everyone has his or her own rights. We need to respect, we need to observe, and you have to find wise ways to keep your parents happy, your spouse happy, your in-laws happy, as much as you can, in the way that Allah is pleased. If they ask you to do something wrong, then of course you don't do something wrong, but try to minimize, minimize problems. But we cannot do zul to our wife because of parents, or do zul to our parents because of wife or husband. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Yakun al-rajul hamhu batnahu wa qiblatahu zawjatahu." The concern of a man becomes his stomach and his qibla, his point of direction, becomes his wife and his faith becomes his dirham, his money. Dirham, silver coin, is money. What is, does this person worship? Money. Which direction he has? His wife. And concern is stomach. This is different from Islamic way of life that you would have halal and tayyib and healthy food. That's good. But just, you know, to do things in order to enjoy your, you know, self in eating delicious food. Or, for example, you, know, you just you know keep your wife in you know, place so that, uh, for example, you know, you just get you know what you want from your wife because you don't want to lose her, even if she's wrong, even if she's doing zol, and then just doing things for the sake of money. In another hadith, Rasulullah said, "Yuti or rajul zawjatahu wa yasi walidayh." In this culture, a man obeys his wife and disobeys his parents. The last hadith for tonight, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, وَرَأَيْتَ الْمَرْأَةَ you find in Akhir Zaman a woman who would treat her husband with force and violence. Women become violent. Women should be manifestation of love and care. But women become violent, they control it. You know, soft maybe power of, or sometimes you know, force their husband and they do what their husband doesn't want even if it is right you know sometimes husband doesn't want something right that's not what we are talking about but husband has some desires which are legitimate which are right about, for example, what should we do as family, etc. This woman, Ta'mal, against the will of her husband. It is uh, sometimes interpreted as 
he, she would spend the money of her husband without the consent of her father, her husband. Uh, it, it, I have another also interpretation, but I think maybe it's better just to keep this. So these are few challenges of family life in Akhir al-Zaman. Inshallah, there are few more that we discuss. Shall we come longer and we don't want to rush. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us very the alert is safer. When you are heedless, that's dangerous. So we ask Allah to make us conscious and alert about challenges that we are facing or are soon going to face and help us to prevent as much as possible and if we are facing them to be immunized and even help other people, other communities about these problems. May Allah give shifa to all people who are here. May Allah send rahmah and rahmah to all the people who are not who have passed away especially those who are right upon us. May Allah bless our parents and for parents and those who are alive to give them very dignified and happy and comfortable life and those who have passed away. May Allah be very kind and generous with them. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.